All right, so in this tutorial, we're gonna go ahead and make this program. We're gonna have a very nice GUI, which is going to show a simple button and a simple text view. And inside here, every time you click on the button, it will give us a random quote that we will retrieve from an API. And as soon as we click about eight of them, it's going to load some more. So the user will have no delay in the user experience. And it's a very simple program that we can make in Python. So I just thought it would be a very cool project to share with you guys. But uh, let's get started immediately by closing this window over here and starting a new project. So when you start a new project, you should have something that is similar to this. Or if you don't have that, just make sure that your main file is empty. And the first thing we want to do is go to our terminal. And the only thing we have to install here is the requests package. So to do that, all you have to type in is pip install requests and it will tell you we're collecting everything and we are installing the following packages. And once that has been successfully done, we can go ahead and close the terminal and we can start with our imports. So the first one we want to import is takeinter, which is part of Python. So you don't have to worry about that. And then we're gonna go and type in import requests. And then we want to import some threading so we can start a new thread to make the user experience very smooth. So we're just going to import thread. Then right below, we're gonna type in API and we are going to paste in this link, which you can find in the description of the video down below. And this link is going to take us to a page that will show us some JSON, but uh, the link is in the description. So just get that and paste it there. Then we want to create an empty list, which is going to be called quotes, because every time we load something, we want to add it to this list. And then we're gonna type in quote number. So we know which number we are uh, looping through when we click on the button and that will take care of all the variables that we'll need for this project up here. Then we're gonna go ahead and create the actual window with TK inter and that's going to be TK.TK to initialize it. And then we can go window.geometry which is going to be 900 by 260. And you can play around with that value if you want, of course. Then we're gonna type in window dot title so the users know what kind of program they're dealing with then we want to go ahead and initialize the grid so we're going to type in window dot grid and we are going to do underscore column figure and then we're going to set that to zero and we are going to give it a weight of one then we want to call our window dot resizable and just for me i like to set it to false because it makes me feel like the program is much more solid but if you do not add this option, you'll be able to stretch the window as much as you want. So that's up to you as well. Then let's give this window a background caller. So we're just gonna do window.configure and we're gonna type in BG for background and we're gonna give it the caller of gray. Then right below, we are gonna type in if name is equal to main, then we want to call our window and call dot main loop. And this will start the program for us so that this window will be stuck in a continuous loop, meaning the window will stay open and it will not close because the program will not have finished executing. So essentially what I tried to say is that this will just keep it in an infinite loop so the program will appear as if it's running. And this up here is just to tell the program that if we are in this main file, then we should run this main loop. Otherwise, nothing's going to happen. So let's just go ahead and click on play and see what we've done so far. And when you click on play, you'll see that you'll get this empty gray window, which is great. We're doing good so far. Now we can close everything again. And we can go ahead and add some labels and buttons. So we'll just put this down here and we'll give it a comment which says execute the program. Then we're just going to add another comment which is going to be called UI so we can understand where we are in this program. And the first thing we want to take care of is the quote label. So we're just gonna say quote label. And then we are going to go ahead and type in TK dot label. And the first parameter we have to pass in is the window. And then we should add some text, which is going to be click on the button to generate a random number with an exclamation mark, comma. Under that, we're gonna give it a height of six. Now we're gonna give it a vertical padding of 10. And we need to specify a wrap length, which will make sure that the text does not clip out of the screen. So this is important and we will set it to 800. And under that, we will also change the font just so we can make it look a bit nicer. And we will make it a Helvetica with the size of 14, or apparently it's called Helvetica. Make sure it's like that. Then we can go right below it so we can actually place it on the screen. We need to provide a 
grid placement. So we're going to type in the quote label dot grid. And we want to place that on row zero and column zero because it is the first element, of course. Then we're going to use a feature called stick. And this is just going to center the element for us. So we want to stick it to west and east, which means it will be in the center between west and east. And you can also put north and south. That's how this uh, kind of stick works in case you want to change things. They use the directions as we do as humans northwest, east, and south. Then we'll give it a horizontal padding of 20 and a vertical padding of 10. Then let's just format everything a bit. And this right here will take care of the label or where the quote actually appears. And then right below that, we want to create the button which will help us generate the quote. So we're gonna type in button and that's going to be equal to tk.button. So we can generate a button and then we want a text which is just going to equal generate and we're going to use a command which is going to be called get random quotes and we have not created that yet so don't worry if it appears in red then we want to give it a background color so it looks a bit nicer and that's going to be hashtag 0052 cc and then we want to give it a foreground color which is the text i believe of FFFF. -F -F -F. All right, let's put the hashtag in front of that, of course, so that we can see the text color. Then we also want to give it an attribute of active background color, which is when the user clicks on it, we want to make sure that the background turns gray or whatever color you want. I'm just going to insert gray. And finally, we can go ahead and copy the font selection up here and just paste it down below. Then we also have to place it on the grid. So we're going to type in button.grid. And we can just copy the previous selection. So actually just put this here. And we're just going to change the row to one. Now let's create some space above the UI comment because we are going to create a few functions. The first one's going to be the get random quotes. So we're going to type get underscore random underscore quotes. So we can get rid of that error. And inside here, we're just going to type in pass. So we can go ahead and run the program and see what we have done so far. So let's go ahead and click on play. And so far, you'll see that we have a button and a nice text view. But of course, when we click on it, nothing really happens. So we are going to fix that right now and add the functionality to the code. So we created this function. But before we continue with this function, we have another function we have to take care of because that is the main logic we will be looking after. So up here, we're going to type in definition preload quotes. And the first thing we want to do is refer to our global quotes list so we can add things to it. And the first thing I want to do is print that we are retrieving some quotes. So loading more quotes. It means this method has been called. And then right below, we can create a for loop. So for x in the range of 0 to 10, we want to create a random quote. And that's going to call our requests.get. And we are going to insert our API link. And we want to turn this to JSON. So we're going to create a value called content, which is just going to be the quote itself. So we're going to call random quotes. Then we have to add some square brackets. And we're just going to call content. And if you open the JSON file, you'll see that there is a key called content. Then we're going to create a value called author. And that's going to be also a random quote at the index of author. And then to create the quote itself, we're going to go ahead and type quote is equal to content plus then we want to create two escape slashes. So we create a new line. And then we're going to add another plus which is going to say by with a space mark and plus the author. So we'll get a quote, a space and a text that tells us who wrote it. And then we can also write print the content so we can see all the quotes being generated as we run the program. And finally, we need to add these quotes to a list so we can actually loop through them and retrieve the quotes as we click on the button. So quotes dot append and we will append each quote in this loop. And then at the end of the loop, we're going to go ahead and print that we have finished get, retrieving all of the quotes. So here we will type in finished loading more quotes with an exclamation mark. So this is the method that will help us get all of the quotes from the API. Now we need to create the get random quotes function, which will be handled each time we click on the button. But right before we do that, we're going to go ahead and call this preload quotes function. So that will be the first thing that happens when the user tries to start the program. But let's go ahead and click on play and see what happens when we click on play. As you can see, the first thing that happens is the program tries to load all of these 10 quotes. And then as soon as it loads those 10 quotes, the program starts and we will have this window here. So all that's left to do is to actually take these quotes 
and insert them into the text view because generate still does nothing. All right, so let's go to our get random quote function and we are going to refer to a few global variables. So we're gonna get the quote label, then we're gonna go global quotes and finally global quote number. And to edit the text of the label, we're gonna have to go and type in quote label dot configure and inside here we're going to say the text should actually be equal to quotes at the index of the quote number which we will increment each time we click on the button so we'll type in quote number and that's going to equal the quote number plus one and just so we can log what number we're at we're just going to type in print and quote number then finally for the logic that allows us to load the next quotes we're just going to type in if the quotes at the index of quote number is equal to quotes at the index of minus three, which should be the last element minus two. Then we will want to load some more quotes so that the user can have some time to read his final quotes before the program actually loads some more. But anyway, if we arrive to the second to last quote, we want to start a new thread which is going to take a target and that target is going to be the preload quotes function without any parentheses, mind you. And we're gonna say thread.start. And that's just going to start the new thread, which will allow the program to call this function over here without blocking the user interface. So it won't look like anything happened to the user, but uh, the program will be calling some more quotes under the hood. So you'll have a very fluent user.